Bien, vamos a ver los detalles de una reciente entrevista al CEO de Microsoft, que bueno, básicamente dice que la AFI está sobrevalorada, que Microsoft va a reducir su inversión en IA. Hemos visto que bueno, en los últimos meses pues todo era IA en todas las empresas, grandes inversiones, y también sabemos que tiene el 49% de OpenAI. Y bueno, básicamente, en resumidas cuentas, dice que lo que está ocurriendo con la AFI y las evoluciones en los Besmar es básicamente que están más que manipulados y dijo que la IA pues no puede hacer crecer la economía global en un 10%, entonces todo este discurso de IA es ruido. Y bueno, ya hemos visto el, el modelo de OpenIA y esa versión 4.5 que esperaba ser bastante mejor y lo que es, es bastante más cara, pero no, al tal, no hasta el punto de ser tan buena y Microsoft por eso va a dejar de gastar en exceso porque pues bueno está observando y vamos a ver la, la parte importante que los gobiernos de todo el mundo se están anunciando inversiones muchos son copias de LLMs todos los gobiernos parecen que quieren hacer LLMs que luego no van a llegar a nada así que básicamente es tirar el dinero y las empresas de ya son las que más están quemando Así que la idea del CEO es ver a dónde va todo y cuando necesites infraestructura o la burbuja explote, pues ahí estarán. Bueno, vamos a ver un poquito de la, de la entrevista, las cosas más interesantes. Explosión, abundance, whatever, commodity of intelligence available. You know, the first thing we have to observe is GDP growth, right? Yeah. Before I get to what Microsoft's sort of revenue will look like. I mean, there's only one governor in all of this, right? Which is, this is where a little bit of, we get ahead of ourselves with all this AGI hype, which is, hey, you know what? Let's first see if, let's say develop, I mean, like, remember, like the developed world is what? 2% growth, and if you adjust for inflation, it's zero. Yeah. Uh, that, like, so in 2025, as we sit here, Call, I'm, I'm not an economist, at least I look at it and say, man, we have a real growth challenge. Yeah. So the first thing that we all have to do is let, and, and for when we say, oh, this is like the industrial revolution, blah, blah, blah. Oh, let's have that industrial revolution type of growth. That means to me, 10%, 7%, developed world, inflation adjusted, growing at 5%, that's the real marker, right? So we. It's not just, it can't just be supply side, right? It has to be, in fact, that's the thing, right? I think there's a, a lot of people are writing about it. I'm glad they are, which is the big winners here are not going to be tech companies. Uh, the winners are going to be the broader industry that uses this commodity that, by the way, is abundant. Right. Um, and suddenly productivity goes up and the economies is going, you know, growing at a faster rate. When that happens, we'll be fine as an industry. But that's, to me, the moment, right? So it, us self-claiming some AGI milestone, that's just nonsensical benchmark hacking to me. The real benchmark is, is the <laughs> world growing right. at 10%. Okay, so if the world grew at 10%, the world economy is 100 trillion or something, if the world grew at 10%, that's like extra 10 trillion uh, in value produced every single year. If that is the case, um, you as a hyperscaler, it seems like, 80 billion is a lot of money. Um, shouldn't you be doing like 800 billion? <laughs> if you if you really think in a couple of years we could be really growing the world economy at this rate, and the key bottleneck would be, do you have the compute necessary to deploy these AIs to do all this work? I mean that that is correct, and so therefore, but by the way, the balance is like I think a little bit of it is right now is like, hey, let me like the classic supply side is, oh, let me build it and they'll come, right? I mean that's an argument, and yeah. you you know after all we've done that, we've taken enough risk. Uh, to go do it. But at some point, the supply and demand have to map. Um, and so that's what I think, we, and that's why I'm, I'm tracking both sides of it, right? So that's why I think, you know, you can go off rails completely when you're like all hyping yourself with all the supply side versus really understanding how to translate that into real value to customers. Um, and so, unless, and that's why I look at my inference revenue, that's one of the reasons why even the disclosure on the inference revenue, it's interesting that not many people are talking about their real revenue. Um, but to me, that I think is important uh, as a governor for how you think about it, right? And you're not going to say, oh, they have to symmetrically meet at any given point in time, but you need to have existence proof that you are able to parlay yesterday's, let's call it, 
capital into today's uh, demand so that then you can again invest, maybe exponentially even, uh, knowing that you're not going to be completely rate mismatched. Yeah. I wonder if there's a contradiction in these two different viewpoints because, look, I mean, one of the things you've done wonderfully is you make these early bets when there's you, you invested in OpenAI in 2019, even before there was Copilot and any applications. If you look at the Industrial Revolution, these um, you know six, set six, ten percent uh, build outs of railways and whatever things, many of those were not like we've got revenue from the tickets and now we're gonna yeah, whatever. There's a lot of money lost. Um, that's true. <laughs> the uh, so if you if you really think like there's some potential here to 10x the or 5x the growth rate of the world. And then you're like, well, what, what is the revenue from GPT-4? Um, I mean, like, if you really think that that's the possibility from the next level up, shouldn't you just like, let, let's go crazy, let's do the hundreds of billions of dollars of compute? I mean, there's like some it's chance sense, to get that. Right, I mean, like, the, the thing is, like, I mean, like, here's the interesting thing, right? The real question, quite frankly, to answer is, um, is this just about, like, that's why even that balanced uh, approach to the fleet, at least, is very important to me, right? Which is, it's not about building compute. It's about building compute that can actually help me not only train the next big model, but also serve the next big model. Uh, and you understand until you do those two things, you're not going to be able to really be in a position to take advantage of even your investment, right? right? So that's kind of where it's not a race to just building a model. It's a race to creating a commodity that is getting used in the world to drive. So you have to have a complete thought, not just one thing that right. you're thinking about. And so that's at least in my view of saying, hey, and by the way, one of the things is, that it will be overbuilt. To your point about you sort of said what happened in the dot-com era. Yeah. And I look at it and say, now the memo has gone out that, hey, you know, you need more energy and you need more compute. Thank God for it, right? And so everybody's going to race. In fact, I look at the number of, it's not just companies deploying, countries are going to deploy capital. Yeah. And and they will be clearly, like, I I'm, I want to, I'm really, hope, I'm, I'm so excited to be a leaser because, by the way, I build a lot, I lease a lot. I am thrilled that I'm going to be leasing a lot of capacity in 27, 28, because I look at the bills and I'm saying, this is fantastic. The only thing that's going to happen with all the compute bills is the prices are going to come down. Yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of prices coming down, you recently tweeted after the DeepSeek model came out uh, right. about Jevons Paradox. Um, and I'm curious if you can flesh out, so Jevons Paradox occurs when there's like the demand for something is highly elastic. Um, is intelligence that bottlenecked on prices going down. Because when I think about at least my use cases as a consumer, it's like intelligence is already so cheap. It's like two cents per million tokens. Like, do I really need it to go down to 0 0.02 cents? I'm just like really bottlenecked on it becoming smarter. And if you need to do charge me 100x, do 100x bigger training run, um, I'm happy for companies to take that. But maybe you're seeing something different on the enterprise side or something. What, what is the key use case of intelligence that really requires you to get a 0 0.002 cents per million tokens? I mean, I think the, the real thing is the utility of the tokens, right? So which is, in some sense, uh, both are uh, need to happen. One is intelligence needs to get better and cheaper. And any time there's a breakthrough, like even what DeepSeek did or what have you, with the efficient frontier of, let's say, performance per you know token changes, uh, and the curve gets bent, um, and the frontier moves, yeah. that just brings more demand. And so that's sort of how I look at it. And that's quite what happened with cloud, right, by the way. Here's an interesting thing. Bueno, muy interesante. Os voy a dejar el vídeo más abajo por si lo queréis ver. Pero bueno, entre datos, la GI está sobrevalorada. Básicamente, la manipulación de, de Betsman hace que pequeños avances, pues, eh, los manipulen y digan que se ha avanzado bastante globalmente. 